May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So in our Gospel reading this morning, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And these famous words of Jesus mark the beginning of a kind of four-week mini-series that we're going to take in our Gospel readings through the Gospel of John. And these four weeks come around every three years, usually in the summer, and it's become known as Jesus' Bread of Life Discourse. But this focus on bread, it really began with our Gospel reading last week, where Jesus feeds 5,000 people by multiplying bread and fish. And after this astonishing event, Jesus quietly slips away, but a a large crowd of people want to follow him. They find out where he is, they track him down, and it is this crowd of people that Jesus is speaking with, and the dialogue goes back and forth over these four weeks. And in this dialogue with the people, Jesus really repeats the same phrases multiple times. I am the bread of life. I am the bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. The bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. So you can expect to hear those words a lot in our gospel readings for the next few weeks. But every time Jesus says these same things, the people push back with questions. Isn't this Jesus, the child of Mary and Joseph? We know his parents, so how can he say that he has come down from heaven? And how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And this idea that Jesus is the bread, and by eating this bread we can know God, it's a shocking and difficult new idea for the people. And towards the very end of this bread of life discourse, Jesus says, this is a difficult teaching. Who can accept it? We're even told that the disciples start complaining to each other about this, and that Jesus asks them, does this teaching offend you? And by the end of these four gospel passages, we're told that many of the crowd had turned back and no longer went about with Jesus. But for those of us who attend church frequently, maybe for the whole of our lives, we might hear his words very differently. The language of Jesus as bread is very, very familiar. Every week in our Eucharistic liturgy, we hear these words. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. So maybe it's hard for us to hear how shocking this language of Jesus the bread, of eating Jesus, would have sounded to the people who first heard Jesus say it. What does it mean that Jesus is bread? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And throughout Christian history, these have been contentious ideas, contentious questions. How do we understand the metaphor of Jesus as bread particularly in the celebration of the Eucharist? And what does it really mean to say that we eat his body and drink his blood? Well, this morning, I want to share with you all a little bit of my personal journey of changing understanding and experience of Jesus as the bread of life. And it begins when I was a child. Because I was a church kid, I went to church multiple times a week. And I think I would have been surprised as a child to learn that the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. 
I grew up in a church tradition where communion is treated as a memorial service, almost like a funeral for Jesus. It's a solemn ritual. It's important to believe and to remember Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. And the bread and wine in this service are really just symbols to help us remember. But the way communion was practiced was so serious and kind of nerve-wracking that it would not have occurred to me to think that it should be a celebration. In this church tradition, communion only took place once a month, and children were excluded. So I remember being told on those weeks to stay extra quiet in Sunday school, just the other side of the wall, so that the adults wouldn't hear us making noise and be distracted from this important, solemn ritual. Now, I think that this kind of anxiety and solemnity, it came from a good place. It came from good intentions. The lovely, faithful people in the church I grew up in wanted to take seriously this practice at the heart of their faith. But I was taught that if you ate and drank communion in an unworthy manner, then you could bring condemnation upon yourself. I was never quite clear what the unworthy manner meant, which just kind of added to the anxiety. And so as a result, when I began receiving communion myself later on as a teenager, I was always a bit scared of it. And even after I left that church tradition, sometimes this feeling lingered. But a number of years ago, two things happened that helped change my understanding of what happens when we eat and drink at communion. The first, around 10 years ago, I moved to New York City and started attending a church called St. Lydia's in Brooklyn. And St. Lydia's is a church that celebrates the Eucharist every week around a full meal. So we would eat delicious soups and stews and we would tear off big chunks of the communion bread and dip them in the food. At St. Lydia's, I learned how different communion feels when it is something that feeds you every week, literally, as well as spiritually, rather than an occasional, symbolic, solemn act. In that context, the Eucharist became the thing that gave me life, that took away my anxiety or my guilty feelings, rather than triggering them. And around this same time, I read Take This Bread by Sarah Miles. And in this book, Sarah describes herself as an enthusiastically secular woman who one day, for no particular reason, wandered into a church in San Francisco. She heard the words, Jesus welcomes everyone to this table and burst into tears. She felt inexplicably drawn to go forward and receive a little piece of bread and a little sip of wine. And she experienced what she calls an unexpected and terribly inconvenient Christian conversion that radically changed her life. Now reading this book, it really blew my mind. The idea that someone could receive the Eucharist without even really knowing what it meant and could meet Jesus so profoundly. Amazing. It challenged everything I'd learned as a child about believing, understanding, remembering Jesus' sacrifice and death. And the way that Sarah Miles talked about receiving Jesus in a real tangible way in that moment, it made me understand the idea of living bread. And she says, I was so hungry for that bread that I just kept going back. Throughout this bread of life discourse that we're reading through in the Gospel of John, the writer portrays Jesus as one who wants to instill trust and life in those who eat his bread. John wants us to understand that Jesus' bread provides life for those who trust enough to follow him. And one of the commentaries on this week's gospel explains that in these texts, John 
never uses the Greek noun for faith, but always its verbal form. So like have faith, come to faith, or put faith. So in John's gospel, faith is a doing word. And when Jesus tells the crowds, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom God has sent. I don't think he's extolling a particular intellectual belief or a certain theological position. Rather, he is inviting people to an active commitment to a person, to Jesus. The work of God, John tells us, is to follow Jesus, to walk with him. For Sarah Miles, the radical conversion that she experienced led her to set up a food pantry, which offers free food to everyone without exception. Every week in that same church in San Francisco where she first encountered Jesus in the bread, fresh produce is spread out all across the communion altar and on tables around it. People come to the table and choose their groceries. And she says, I often thank God for letting me feed others as I have been fed and for allowing me to give, knowing that at other times I will only be able to receive. When we open the doors of the food pantry every week, she says, it is the same invitation that we sing on Sundays when we gather God's people around the table draw near. Jesus said, the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The people said to him, give us this bread always. Jesus answered them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God.